So your ability to make and create creative ideas will be what sets you apart from the crowd. Creativity is a collaboration between you and all the books, movies and music you have consumed before you. What would it be like if everything you encountered is stored, memorized and distilled neatly into one place, like a library especially curated for you? We need a creative environment that we can explore and wander around in when we are lost in our own ideas. So one solution to our current information overload that we get from our environment is building a second brain. And I have encountered the idea of building a second brain by the book from Tiago Forte called Building Your Second Brain. And I have really loved this book. I think it has changed a little bit the way I look at information and the way I interact with information. And I hope to today share the main ideas behind this book and how I implement it in my life to create my own second brain. But first of all, what is a second brain? So Tiago Forte says that a second brain is a place where you capture and store different types of information that you encounter throughout your day and I think most of you probably already have a version of a so-called second brain so this could be for example a notebook that you have that you capture little notes in during the day or it could be a dedicated app on your computer like Notion or Evernote but in general I think the type of program or the type of notebook you use is not the most important behind this building a second brain method. The main idea is that you have a place where you can store this information and then re-encounter it and recreate it into your own creative idea. So I will show you in this video the different steps of the building a second brain method such that you can start building your own second brain. So the biggest idea behind the building a second brain method is this so-called code step plan. So code stands for capture, organize, distill and express. Let's first start with capture. So I think most of us know how to capture things. So that's just whenever you encounter new information, you put it into a certain notebook or a dedicated place but the thing is sometimes we're a little bit unsure of what to capture I think most people fall into two camps or they capture way too much they literally highlight entire paragraphs of a book or they capture way too little so they don't note down anything at all when they're reading something or encountering new information and I think one really big tip that I got from the book is to capture what resonates and I think if you capture what resonates you kind of see you kind of become a curator of information instead of just a passive observer and also by only capturing what resonates or what you find surprising you will see that you can kind of leave behind information that you already know and I think by doing this in the end you get a notebook filled with really new novel ideas or quotes that you got from other information sources and one really big benefit that I have found from doing this is that if you slowly capture throughout your life everything that resonates you are slowly adding value to your own library without having any active plans or anything active that you have to do at that moment. So for example, I capture passive moments that really resonate with me during meetings, when reading a book, when listening to a song, even movies. And I think one thing I would want to recommend to you is to also capture, for example, pictures or capture parts of clips, because I think most of us capture parts of text, but we don't really capture thoughts, movies and or pictures. Whereas I think if you capture all of these, your projects will will become a lot more interesting, both visually as well as information wise. And I think especially when you just start taking a new course, this can be really insightful later because what you capture as a novice is quite different from what you capture as an expert. And sometimes it's really hard to get back into this novice mindset. And one thing, if I look back that I wish I did was when I was learning different languages that I had captured my thoughts or feelings or what I found really surprising in that language because right now I'm a little bit more advanced in some languages and it's sometimes quite a shame that I don't remember first learning these languages. So that also brings me to today's sponsor Linguda. So Linguda has kindly teamed up with me to talk to you a little bit about language learning. So throughout my life I've learned a few languages but right now I'm really focusing on French again because I have a good friend in France and I kind of want to keep my language skill up. But one of the main issues at least that I face living here in the Netherlands is that there are not that many French speakers around me so and I find it personally really important to practice with native speakers so that's one thing I really like about Lingoda that's they always have a native speaker as a teacher that can help you really practice your pronunciation as well as grammar and vocab so with Lingoda I am able to fit it into my super busy schedule and language classes really allow me to slowly increase my speaking abilities. Yes. 
Also something that I really like is that you can choose the topic that you are interested in and you can practice as often as you want. So for example, if you have a job interview in a certain language, you can really zoom in to this topic and book only classes that have job interview as their main topic. So during the holidays and the weekend, I'm slowly trying to make it a habit to have one French class a week. I'm not there yet, but I really hope to keep this habit up such that I can also speak with my friends abroad in French. So Linguda now has offered my subscribers this amazing deal for Black Friday and that's 50% off your first trial and the discount code is charlotte50 or you can just click the link down in the description below and if you're learning a language at the moment I would be really curious what language you are learning and what kind of trials you're facing because I think we could perhaps help each other but let's get Back to the video. So the second part of the code method is organize and that's where you organize your notes into their dedicated places and Tiago for the head has this whole um, schema of how to do this but I personally try to just keep it as simple as possible. I think most people spend too much time on organizing their notes and I do think having a nice organized place for all your ideas is really good but in the end, if you spend 90% of your time organizing your different notes and ideas, you're perhaps wasting a little bit of your time. So I think keep it as simple as possible. That's my only tip. So I just use three apps. I have Notion, which I talked about before in this video. And there I just literally put everything. I sometimes put it into different projects, folders, or I create a specific pages for different projects. But in general, I just put all my ideas there. Then the second app I use is Todoist. And this is just a really easy, um, to-do list manager. I think the way I use it every time I think of something small I have to do or an errand I have to run, I put it in there. And finally, I just have a basic notebook. I do journaling in there. I make to-do lists. I write different thoughts, things I have on my mind. Then the third part of the code method is the still. So the still is where you try to make your notes as comprehensive as possible for your future self. So you really try to get the key message from the little notes you make. So for example, if you highlighted a passage from a book, try to find a key sentence. And I especially like to rewrite it in my own words, because if I rewrite it already in my own words, I can literally just copy paste to use it later in a piece I'm writing or a video I'm creating. But sometimes I am a little bit lazy and then I just highlight the main message or the main words that I see in the text. And I do have to say with this part, I would be a bit careful removing the original text because I I think sometimes when we're really involved in the information, we are sometimes the least qualified person to really judge the information we have collected. And that's because we're too involved in it. So I think sometimes leaving the original note with the rewritten passage under it is better than removing the original note because maybe in a later part in your life, you want to use the original note as well. And the last part of the code method is express. And I personally think express is actually where 90% of your time has to be focused on because expressing is creating and making the information you have gathered in a new way such that it can become a project for example or a blog post or a paper you're writing for your research and the main message in the book for this part is to start from the idea of abundance so I know I have the tendency when I start on a new project to not look at all the information I have already created but to start almost afresh with a a fresh search on the internet and trying to find new information that I can put in my projects. But usually actually when I look at all the information I have gathered over my life in my Notion and notebooks, I already have 50% of the project done because a lot of projects that I nowadays start are already things that I have thought about for a long time during my research, during my masters or even during my bachelors. Am I looking what you already have in your second brain and reassembling these information pieces? You can sometimes get a lot further than starting from scratch every time you start a new project. And one of the main messages also in this part is to then work in these 90 minute blocks. So I think if one sure in the express part of the code method, it's good to work in these 90 minute blocks and focus on one thing you try to create with your already gathered information. So during those 90 minutes, you're not allowed to look up any new information. And I think you sometimes will surprise yourself the new ideas you come up with by combining old information together instead of starting 
building a project from scratch again. So then the last thing I want to talk a little bit about are the benefits of building a second brain. So one of the things that I've really noticed by creating a second brain and focusing in on it every day is that I am creating value slowly in increments over time. So every time I read a book, even if it's for pleasure, I usually highlight different passages that I really like. And even if I don't immediately use those passages in a project, I sometimes re-encounter those passages a year later, two years later, and then it really sparks new inspiration for a project that I'm currently working on or a project that I want to start. Also a big benefit I think is that you kind of create this perspective of a curator. So instead of passively observing information and passively interacting with information, you actually become pretty specific about the type of information you let into your second brain and also the type of information that could be valuable. Because before I've really noticed that I started to focus a lot on neuroscience, which is my study, and I would only consume information on neuroscience. But now I noticed that actually going to a museum, going to an art show can sometimes for me give a lot more new information or new ideas for a neuroscience project than just learning about neuroscience itself. And also I want to leave you with one final quote from Tiago Forte that I really like and that's this. Only when we put it to use, we get confidence in what we know. Shift from consuming to creating. More is not better and, we have, and what we have needs to be valued. And I hope that with this quote, I will leave you and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're also working on creating your second brain, please leave me some tips for um, how you're doing it. And otherwise, see you next week. Bye.